So I love to hear that. I thank God for me for being able to meet with you all. It is such an amazing thing to be able to praise God. I won't say a lot tonight. I want to talk about praise. I this year I preached a lot about praise. Earlier on, the pastor read uh, Psalms 150. We can see about praise in the Psalms 150. Praise is not a image of the church it is the image of heaven hallelujah is not only for ag hallelujah is a word that every heaven people have to say how many heaven citizens are here hallelujah let us all scream hallelujah all the heaven citizens are so quiet. I will say one, two, three, and let's say it loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all praise God. On earth, praise is the most amazing thing. Everyone knows Psalms is a book of praise. This year I learned about the book of Psalms. Psalms is the longest book in the Bible. It is a book filled with songs. How important praise is. Praise is not what had happened before. It, it also says about what's happened. The songs reveal what also will happen in the future. That's why a sermon is not a prophecy only. The songs are also prophecies. In our country, there is a songwriter, Siakim Pong. Who knows it? Hmm. Show me your hands. He's one of our friends. In 2006, 2007, he wrote a song. That song was so uh, viral, went run viral all over the world. That song is when the, when that song is saying, "Oh, when the storm comes, you are my rock." Everyone in the village and cities they sing. It is one of the most popular songs in Myanmar. In village and city, in a Baptist church in AG. Every conference, everyone sing, Lord, you are my rock in the storm. Who knows that song? May God bless you. If you don't know, go and watch it on YouTube. What happened after that song got popular? These praise and worship songs reveals us what's going to happen in the future. In May 2008, there is the biggest cyclone happened in Myanmar. That song is the most encouraged song in that storm. With that song, God warned the whole country. Before the storm comes, there's a prophecy in the song. As people are praising the song, they haven't noticed that it's going to happen in the future. With that praise song, God warned the people. There is my disciple, Pastor Joshua A. 
And not long after COVID happened, everyone had to hide in their houses. At that time, that song is the most meaningful to them. And whenever they sing it, they felt the love of God. Oh Lord, hide me. Lord, let the COVID pass away from me. And then in the chorus, it's saying, Lord, I want to see you in ways that I've never seen before. And after that COVID, the praise and worship changed. Everyone has to praise and worship from live Facebook. Uh, before a lot of pastors say, you cannot hold phone in the church. Do not look at your phone. And after COVID, it changed. And oh, open your phone. Oh, come online. It become never you, you've never seen before. We, uh, since we cannot say amen, you have to write amen, amen on life. It changed. The songs reveal what is going to happen in the future. And while in COVID, Pastor Ted Thong, write another song. The battle is yours, Lord. The battle is yours, Lord. You will fight for me. There is an army of angels. What can I fear? What can I fear? We sing it with the presence of God. In 2020, it is the most popular song. And what happened in 2021? There was a coup in our country. There was a war in the village. Everyone has to say, Lord, the battle is yours. There is an army of angels. When I was in Myanmar, that song is amazing. We can hear the gunshots oh, everywhere. What shall I fear? While well, I sing that, my knees are shaking. The songs reveal what's going to happen in the future. That's why the songs that we sing are very important. The, it happens as we sing. Right now, what songs are popular right now? My spiritual son, there, he wrote a song. He wrote a song for a conference in 2022. That song said, I will still be prosperous in this earth. I am a prophet with uh, the inheritance from God. I will still be prosperous. I will still be successful in this earth. If you believe that, it will happen as you believe. If you sing it, you, it will happen as you sing it. Let us all praise that God. Uh, isn't this what's happening in the world right now? Let's learn about Psalms. Psalms is the 19th, 19th book starting from Genesis. If you are going to come from Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, it is the 19th, 19th book. Why did God put the Psalms in this 19th book? It is not the end of it. If you count it back from Revelation, it is the 47th book. If you uh, count it back from Revelation, it is the 47th book in the Bible. The order of this Bible is the Holy Spirit. It is not by coincidence. At the Front 19. The, if you add 19 and 47, 
1947. What happened in 1947? It is the year the Israelites signed for independence. Where there's praise, there's freedom. The church that has praise has freedom. The country that has praise has freedom. The family that has praise has freedom. Let us all praise that God. It's amazing. In 1947, the UN uh, determined that Israel is going to be a country. Them uh, writing this praise. The place where he puts the book of praise is that. It is a prophecy. That's why when we learn about Psalms, it is very strange. It is always full of strange things. In Psalms. There are so many times the psalm the, the psalmist tried to uh, cry out to God. Especially in the front, he cried out to God. In those uh, writings, how long There's 18 of how long. It is questioning God how long. He asked God, how long is this problem going to last? It is very strange. Psalms is a song. Even the psalmist have to ask God again in the song. Sometimes songs is not just praising God, you also ask questions to God. He asked, how long is this going to last, God? There are 18 times of that question. There is 18 times from Psalms 1 to 150. If we are going to divide that 18 times, you get 6 times 3 equals 18. What is the meaning of it? There's 6, 6, 6. If you question God, that is the devil. God's children doesn't have to question God. God's children always praise God in every situation. We don't need to ask God question every single situation. We all have to praise God in every situation. We have responsibility to praise God all the time. Let us all praise that God. When he asked that question, I want to show you one verse. He asked God, he blamed God. When he blamed God, it didn't end there. When you blame God, if you say to God the things that you're not satisfied about, all those blaming and unsatisfaction does not end there. There is a time you reap those things. When you praise God, there is a reap to be, uh, there is things to be sold for with that praise. When you blame God, you will have to reap the things with the the Bible says you will reap what you sow tonight we all praise God freely we all praise God limitless those praise shall not end like that. you will be reaping in your life you will be reaping with prosperity you will be reaping limitlessly let us all praise that God 
Salen lesen ni guci ya. Let us look at Psalms 42. Alung tiri chance apa? It is a verse that everyone knows. Eris salen lesen ni ma? In that Psalms 42. Salen siaga babio lesu ye. What does the psalmist say? Tu apa yang begini mu? He asked the question to God when he was praising God. Uh, the verse is that I want you to read eight, verse 8 and 9. Psalm 42 verse 8 and 9. Psalm 42 verse 8 and 9. Achinogo abejao miyo do mudani. Jandu nyinze nisa chingo. Kanya yue achinogdi. Jandando awiko wiliye. Abejao niya badani u. Nga yi chao pito. Payate kingo. Nga shao ya yi. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God my rock. Why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? What does the psalmist say in here? Why do I have to feel this torture from the enemy? Why do I have this? Uh, why do I have to wear these things? He complained to God. Why do I have to wear this morning? Why did the enemy oppress me? Let us all read verse 10. It says in here, worse, sir. It says in here, worse, sir. It says in here, worse, sir. As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? The psalmist in here. He wrote a song about his feelings. How long will this be? Why does the enemy oppress me? Why do I have to wear clothes that are rough? It is a song that David sang years ago. They sang for many years in the house of the Lord. It doesn't end there. I said it earlier, the things that you blame God doesn't end, just end there. When the Bible, uh, when the Bible uh, philosopher learned about these, when they uh, count from Genesis, Psalms of the 19th book. When you learn about the Psalms. If you learn with putting 19 in front of every number. Everything in Psalms 1 happened in 1901. Everything that happened in chapter 2 happened in 1902. It, the psalmist may have sang years ago. It became a fulfillment in 1900. So Psalm chapter 42 means it happened in 1942. What happened in 1942? Many years ago, the psalmist says, my enemies oppressed me. I have to wear clothing of mourning. My enemies break my bones. How long will this be? In 1942. In 1942. German Hitler. He killed six million people with toxins. It is a year where the Jews were the most killed. They were killed like animals. They had to wear clothes that are more of mourning. And the communist Germany asked, them, Where is your God? It happened just as the song said. It is during the Second World War. Think about it. 
a song that had been sang years ago. David will not know what will happen in the future. But as they sang, it happened. That's why in church it is very important what songs you sing. It is important what, what your songs your family sing. It is important what you song you're singing in daily life. Every day people are singing. Oh, I am broken to pieces. Oh, I don't have anything. Oh, my, you don't have to eat poison, you will die. If you want to suicide yourself, if you want to go on the streets, you don't have to do anything. Just sing those songs. Some people sing negative songs. Oh, I don't have any more money. Oh, I don't have appetite. You will be eating the things that you say. That's why don't sing the negativity songs. When I was talking with a person, he said, No one give me presents. There's no one who loves me. So I feel pity for him. And when I was writing his card, you know what song he was singing? He said, I will buy myself a present no one has to buy for me. I can buy myself. Since he's singing that song every single time, who will buy for him? They need to change the song. If you want a revival in your church, you need to change the song. If your family needs to be, wants to be prosperous, you need to change your song. I really like gospel songs. It is a very good song to sing in front of non-believers. But it is not a song for believers. You know, people worship the Oh, he says, what, what shall I do with the treasures oh, of the earth? Like, I will go to heaven. I don't need anything on earth. If you sing that song, you can set your things to me. I won't sing that song. That song is for gospel. Worship is not that song. My song is for worship. I don't need anything on earth. I will be successful. I will still be successful. I will still be prosperous. After we sing that song, we become more successful. The cards that we write before, it changed. As we drive, we sing that song, I'm still going to be prosperous. Yeah, we uh, write uh, Japan cars before. We only write the trash cards that Japan sent from before us. But as we sing this song, God does not allow them for that to happen. It is not possible for you to write a trash card if you're saying I'm prosperous. As we sing this song, God changed my car. He changed my house. Now I started to write the zero kilos. I started to write uh, cars that come from, from cars. My house is near an airport. Once I have declared I'm going to buy a plane, I will have my own plane. At that time, no, let's not talk about a, a plane. So far from airport. Right now, we're closer to airport now. I have to look at uh, the, air, uh, the airplane going right up. Right now, I am imagining my plane. That's why every song you sing will happen to you. It will happen as you sing. Let us all praise that God. I want to read Psalms 40. In Psalms 42, if you learn more, there's so many interesting in there. If I talk more of it, it won't end. The earlier the pastor prophesied, don't look at the clock. It is a prophecy. I want to read Psalms 40, verse 3. 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 Psalms 40, verse Salam, can you lay it again? Nine to three. Say, Chaba, Piro, my today. Trust me, it's gonna end soon. I started up on Nila, we. It is closer to the end than the beginning. Sabi, Jose, you need to be on your shield. How many people could want me to continue preaching? I mean, you get two minutes on Sahome. I will continue preaching if you say Amen louder. America, I'm not the boss of the channel. Let me tell you. 
since America is a democracy country, I cannot oh, do anything. Let us all read it first. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. There is another amazing thing in this. It is the opposite of blaming God. And earlier I said in those 18 times, all the 18 times when he was blaming God, every time it came to that year, the Israelites had to face something. The ancestors saying they question God every time they question God their future generation had to face it that's why I want to warn everyone we don't want to do new things sometimes we don't want to change sometimes we don't want to sing new songs sometimes we like the songs that we sing back in village if you like the songs you sang in the village, go back to the village. You are here because you're going international. He wants you to have the side of international. You're here to overcome the international. God is very amazing. Why do those future generations get problems? Because of the songs that their ancestors sang. That's why some songs we need to start changing. Some songs we need to rest from our church. Some songs we don't even need to sing anymore. We, I also rest so, so many songs in my life. There was a song that I really liked when I first got into the kingdom of God. Every time I sing the song, I cry. What song is that? That song it's a song that says I don't have some things to eat sometimes I don't have uh, things to wear sometimes who get that song uh, it is a song for chin, chin, the, the chin place when I first got into the kingdom of God I always cry when I hear that song because the song in my life is always the same why? because I don't really have anything to eat I don't, after I sing this song I don't know where else should I go eat after I sing this song I don't have any clothes I could change into some songs are the same with your life. Every time I sing this song, I cry. Why? Because I'm like that. Now I rest that song for my life. I always have food to eat. I always have clothes to wear. I'm always overflowing. I don't need to sing that song anymore. If, even if you sing the song I rest that part that's why there are some songs that you need to retire in your life I hope that you can retire it fast or your future and your generation have to face as exactly that's why worship leaders people who are in the church People are singing because it's good to a song. It is like you're cursing your future generation. You may sing because it's a good song. It is not a blessing for your children. Sing the songs of prophecy. You need to sing songs of prophecy for your children. You have to give life a place to those songs. I hope you may understand. There are songs blaming God. There are also verses that says new songs. There are eight times that says new songs. 
Every time they say new song in the song of something amazing happened. They don't sing this new song in a time of happiness. I want uh, to show verse 2. What the psalmist says in here is in verse 2. He says in here in verse 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of my merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. What does the psalmist say? There is a horrible pit. There is merry clay around me. He is not surrounded with good things. He is in a horrible place. It is a horrible clay. What happened here is that God didn't let him fall down in that clay, but on a rock. His surrounding is only destroyed. Even if my surrounding is destroyed, I will not be destroyed. My feet will not fall in that clay, but on the rock. Your, your feet are on a rock. Your feet are on a rock that is Jesus. So he says in here, in verse 3, in verse 3, he put a new song in my mouth. The bad things doesn't happen for nothing. You're not supposed to cry and complain to God when those things happen. You need to sing a new song. You need to sing a new song. God gave you a chance to sing a new song. In this world, you will be facing a lot of problems. The economy is going down. It is not time for us to complain. This time is for us to sing a new song. If you want your feet to stand on a rock, your mouth needs to start singing a new song. Let's all praise that God. New songs has meanings. If you learn about this uh, year, Psalms 40 has uh, uh, the year 1940 events in it. What happened in 1940? It is a time of World War II. The whole world was going to ruin. Many thousands of people are dying. Every day they're only hearing bad news. Everyone has to be scared because every country is uh, threatening each other with bombs. But what the psalmist says in here, in that horrible pit, I am going to sing a new song. I am not going to cry or complain, but sing a new song. Because he says, I'm going to sing a new song. What also happened in 1940? There was a revival on earth in that 1940. Who came up in that 1940? There was a pastor that was named after Billy Graham. He started preaching, God is alive. He started gathering young people in New York, Chicago, and in the streets. Gospel movement uh, leading, Pastor Billy Graham came up. The new generation that changed people's life started to come up. The world is in the middle of a war. But since the psalmist said, I'm going to sing a new song, 
the younger generation came up and sang a new song. He brought so many young people to the God. Now the God Oral Roberts or Ludio Bolari. And there was a guy named Oral Roberts. And now you're an ancient Nessel Mount of China, Nanga and Nagabana, my Irudia Hori. He preached and he healed and he cast out demons. Oh, to a bit Nessori to the Anna Yogan Ying. And because of him, healings happened and the demons got out. American the Mima Tong Goya Lizzie Rachimare, no Tamu Lode, Ludi Musa de Tala. If you look at American history, so many revivalists were the top in those days. Higgins or Poco. God used a man named Kenneth Hagin. Why? The chain nonga. Because of a prophecy that said, I will sing a new song. And just like that, in 1940, a newer generation came up to sing a new song. What about our generation? Is our generation blaming in our situation? Or are we going to sing a new song? Who will sing a new song in this generation? Let us all praise God. Let us all praise God. Let us all praise God. If you are going to sing a new song, you and your generation will do new things. If you still want to sing old songs, only old things will happen to you. Some people ask, why does nothing new happen to me? If you cannot sing new songs, what, what, and what new things will happen to you? Some people say, oh, these songs are so difficult. If the praise song is difficult for you, your life is going to be difficult for you. If the praise are easy for you, your life will be easy. You will be able to be blessed in your life. I will tell you. If you want to sing a new song, 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 be a generation that sings a new song. May God bless people who say amen. May you become a generation that sings a new song. May your children become like Billy Graham. May your children be become like Oral Roberts. May your children be like Kenneth Hagin. I will tell you. It is this right now is a time of horrible pain. The uh, economy is going down. There's no peace on this earth. During the next three and a half years, there will be no The whole world is going to lose peace. You are going to be surrounded by a horrible pain. But this is not for us. People who sing a new song will have to stand on a rock. You will stand on a rock that is Jesus Christ. It, it, on a rock that is Jesus Christ. Let us all praise God. That's why when you sing a new song, it's very strange. Every single time it says in the Psalms, so many things happen. In 144 Psalms, it says also in their new song. It says in 100, uh, Psalms 150, new song. I'm not going to say all of this. Today. In Psalms 144. I'm going to tell this and end it. In Psalms 44. It says something about 2044. It talks about a new song. You know what connection that Psalms 144 has? It has a connection with Revelation 14. In Revelation 14, 1, 2, 3. It says in the heaven they will sing a new song. In Psalms 144, it says about new song. In Revelation 14, it says also about new song. For sure, on 2044, the believers are not going to be on this earth but in heaven singing new song. Soon, the representative is going to come. You know how much connection it has? In Psalms 144. In Revelation 14. 
There is a number of one uh, that they a uh, hundred uh, hundred thousand four hundred forty-four. It says in here a hundred thousand four four hundred forty. Tapi one four four. It says in here a hundred thousand four four hundred forty. In a Revelation also a hundred forty. It says in here a hundred forty-four. In Revelations also a hundred forty-four. There's a connection in there. I won't talk much about this. I will explain it the next time you call Sir David. This generation. Sir David. 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 Sir who agrees? Who agrees? Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Worship in lava. Worship in lava. Did my knee to Ahmed Duban Yoshile? Who will be complaining right now? How many people are going to complain about the situation that you're facing? There's so many things that you can complain about. I don't want to sometimes go to believers' house. And when we go on a trip, people invite us to their house. When they feed the pastors, they always talk. And then they start complaining. They start talking about the bad things in their house. If you talk all those bad things, nothing good will happen. There's always bad things in every family. In every family, there are bad things. As you say it, it won't change anything. With faith, we need to sing a new song. And with faith, we need to start blessing our families. I hope that you understand.